Happy Sunday, Living Word. We're going to start off with a little bit of worship. Amen. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I flee from you? Even if I hide on the highest mountain, you are there. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I flee from you? Even if I
Good morning, Living Word. Welcome to December 2021 already. Can you believe it? You may have noticed I am not Pastor Benny Hurtado, but my name is Lauren Assing. I'm one of the ministry leaders at Living Word, and it will be my pleasure for us to dive into the scriptures today together. Amen. So before we begin, let's just lift this up before the Lord. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us to the end of 2021 already, Father God. We just ask you right now, Lord, as we prepare to dive in, Lord, that you will make this word so plain and clear to us. Open up our hearts to receive. And Lord, have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, PB discussed how our struggles lead us to the hope, or in our case, the hope who is higher than ourselves. Now, along that same thread, our new series is titled Termination of the Selfie Mentality. Now, as we all know, we are preparing ourselves for Christmas. Maybe you've gone shopping, you've begun to think about your menu, put up your tree. Well, this is a great time for us to consider what the birth of our Savior truly means. Now, before we can get to the promised heir, because that's who Jesus is, the promised heir, we can rewind to the patriarchs. And today, we're going to focus on the man after whom God's chosen people were actually named, Israel himself. He wasn't always Israel, though. Before he can receive that name of promise from the Lord, his name was Jacob. Please take a look with me at Genesis chapter 25, verses 21 to 26. Again, Genesis chapter 25, verses 20, 21 to 26. I'm going to read the NIV version for this. It says, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife Rebecca became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red. His whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. And the second one grabbed at the first one's heels and then thus they named him Jacob. So we see that even in the womb, Jacob was building this reputation. Jacob means heel, or in his case, heel grabber or a deceiver. Even as a baby, Jacob was trying to get ahead. He had a me first mentality. Our first point today is that me first is miserable. Again, me first is miserable. Our culture has become really me first, has it not? It's not enough for us to have. We've got to have it first. We've got to have the best. We have to have more than the Joneses. There used to be a saying, keeping up with the Joneses. Now we don't want to keep up with them. We've got to be better than them. And if you think about it, think about how often cell phones come out. We haven't even finished paying off the one we have before we have to get the new one, the latest, the greatest. This causes us this unnecessary pressure. Unnecessary pressure to do what? To get ahead. James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Again, James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. It says, you desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You know, in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 25, in the New Living Translation, Jesus questions. He says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? You know, we can post a thousand happy selfies on beautiful beaches, but it means absolutely nothing if we're at war within ourselves. You know, I love watching Christmas movies. It's just, you know, one of my things. And in this modern version of the Christmas Carol, which, you know, that's the story with Scrooge, a statement was made that I found to be so powerful. The character says, your bank account was full, but your life was empty. Hmm. You know, our bank accounts don't only have to deal with our money. But that greed for money, it's one of the enemy's tactics that he uses to keep us in this me first mentality. And today we're breaking those chains out of that me first mentality. Now this is going to lead us to our next point. And this is what PB would call an ouch moment. So prepare yourselves. 
God cannot bless who you pretend to be. I'll say it again. God cannot bless who you pretend to be. So what does that mean exactly? Well, I hope that you're going to take a little time this week to key in on the story of Jacob. And if you want, you can read the, the rest of chapter 25 of Genesis, as well as chapters 27 and 28 to focus in on for, for the purposes of, of the message. But, you know, when we think about God not being able to bless the people that we pretend to be, you think about all those aliases that you put on. You think about serious deception, if you will. And when you read through those chapters, you'll find Jacob bribing his brother out of his birthright, dressing in animal clothing to deceive his father, tricking his father into giving him the blessing of the firstborn when he's the secondborn. So Jacob, this heel grabber, he gets the blessing he wants, but he doesn't even get to enjoy it. He spends the next two decades running away from his brother, trying to make sure that his brother doesn't kill him. That's no way to live life, right? But we do the same thing. We create a fake identity to bridge the gap between who we actually are and who we want to be. But God can't bless the alias of you. God created and desires to bless the real you. And it's only when we kind of come face to face with that and settle ourselves on who we are that God is going to build us up and transform us and mold us into who he has actually created us to be. He pulls out that potential. Please take a look with me at Psalm 51.6. Again, Psalm 51.6. The New King James Version reads, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. I absolutely love that. Because all of our fancy, trendy clothes, phones, fake versions of who we think we are and want to be, those don't impress God. Because he's looking at the real us, inside and out. So when we do things our own way, our blessings actually become curses. I'll say that again. When we do things our own way, our blessings actually become curses. Let's consider our next point. Change is conflicting. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 to 31, for your reference, when you get the chance to read it, it's the infamous story of Jacob's wrestling match with God. Let's take a look. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 to 26. Again, Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 to 26. It says, This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. And then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. <laughs> Jacob has received the birthright of his brother by deception. He's received the blessing of his father by deception. But now he grabs hold of one who has the power to really change his life. And in order for that change to occur, he has to do two things. He had to hold on until he received that blessing. And he took such a blow that he walked away with the limp. Friends, the blessing is worth the limp. Israel means fighter of God. So I was fighting God, but now God is fighting for me. <laughs> you know, let's read a little bit further in Genesis 32 verses 27 to 30. It says, what is your name? The man asked. And he replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. He blessed Jacob there, and Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. There's a lot of stories about, a lot of conversations about, you know, was this God himself? Was it an angel? The fact is, it was this experience that Jacob had with the Lord. And whether or not this was God or a representative of God, it still was God's message to Jacob, calling him into his purpose. And it was only when he came clean about who he is, right? I'm Jacob. 
Like, I'm, I'm just Jacob. That's when God can actually transform him to Israel. So only when we come clean about who we truly are, can God begin to transform us into who we're meant to be. For us to be able to walk in the purposes for which he has created us. Take a look, please, at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 with me. I love the Amplified Version. It says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Fresh and new. That's what God wants for us. You know, God doesn't force us to take on fake identities. He's also not going to force us to take them off. He's also not going to force us to take on his identity for us. That has to be our choice. That's what he gives us, that free will. At the same time, we have to understand, God's not going to change his identity to better suit our fake ones. The real has to come face to face with the real in order for transformation to take place. Please turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Again, Exodus chapter 3. Verses 14 and 15. This is where we actually encounter Moses. But it says, God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. God is the same God, yesterday, today, and forever. But notice in that verse that we just read, it doesn't say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. It says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is going to lead us to our last point. God is the God of Jacob too. So when we begin to take on this new identity, right? It's not the, the, the receiving of our blessings, the receiving of our promises, the receiving of this new identity. It's not an overnight kind of thing. It's not just going to instantaneously change. It's a process that God is going to work with us. He's going to shape us and mold us. It's like, you know, planting a good seed that's going to fall in good soil to bear great fruit. It's going to take time. So while we're dealing with that, while we're coming face to face with the real us and the fake us and trying to reconcile, God can work in the midst of that process. He is the one working in the midst of that process, actually. If you take a look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, Not in our own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Again, I want to highlight, God created us for his glory. And he doesn't leave us to figure it out by ourselves. He's the one who's going to come in and work in us as we allow him to do that. So it's like those good meals that we were enjoying last week for Thanksgiving. You know, like, I just, I'm so full, but I just want more. That's what it's like to have a relationship with God. The more of him we take in, the less we need all those likes for our selfies. The less we need those fake identities and can really be our true selves. So wherever you might be on your journey, please trust and believe God has a purpose for your life. And what he wants to do, he wants you to be able to grab hold of it. But like to Jacob, you can't grab hold of the promises of God, of the purposes of God, until you let go of all those fake and false identities and grab hold of him. You know, uh, we are going to have a Q&A discussion after this. I hope that you'll join us so we can get kind of deeper in. But let's just pray and ask God to cover his word. Lord, we thank you for the seeds that you have planted in your message today. I pray, Father, that they will bear much fruit for your glory, God. This week, as we begin to resolve, Lord God, those fake identities and really come undone before you, I thank you that you're going to take us and transform us and mold us into people of purpose and promise. Have your way in Jesus' name. So we love you so much. Uh, we hope that you will you know, join us for the Q&A. You can find the link down below. If you have questions, concerns, prayer requests, 
You can check out our website, livingword.nyc. As a reminder, we've got new members classes coming and uh, we are excited for that. Please, until we're able to meet again, know that God loves you and so do we. God bless you.